here it's into the fields, it's quite muddy, then you've got the horses, you can walk around the fields if you want, horses and cattle are out in there, there's baby calves in there, pigs over there, um, a sick cow in there, um, blind horses in here, um, pigs in here, um, as I say we only moved in here about um, a year ago. I look this is one of the newest... Um, this is the newest place, uh, it's yeah. got more acreage, unfortunately this place it used to be a dairy farm. Um, it was then laid over to hay, uh, so the grass has grown. Um, it's good that obviously it's not a dairy farm anymore. No fencing, so we've had to do all the fencing, and that's been a mammoth task. It must be difficult to emotionally to and overwhelming sometimes for all these animals coming in, and you know, some, you, you have to, ever have to turn any away. Or... Yeah, you try not to. I mean, I, you know, like you always try to work with other sanctuaries where you can. You know yeah. who can take in the big animals. You try not to turn them away, but at some point you've got to. It's hard because I'm not like an organisation like a big organisation where you ring up and there's a policy. Somebody who's told to read out a policy down the phone, we don't do this, we don't do that. Yeah. I'm the like life and death in my hands. I say yes, the animal lives. I say no, chances are it's going to die. Well, this is, it's just an infinite amount of animals that can keep coming in because they just keep breeding and breeding yeah, and breeding. Yeah, and breeding. yeah, 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 yeah. And the problem is, when do you say no? I mean, you don't buy animals, but if a farmer reaches out to you, what do you say? It's difficult. You want to kind of say to him, you know, you know, um, but you know what he's going to do with them, otherwise he's just going to send them off. And not everybody's bothered about ethics and animals, they're not bothered, but from a climate perspective, it's got to end. Yeah, you know? or, or it'll be the end of us, won't it? It so? will be, I mean, it definitely will be. Yeah. Things have changed a lot, you know. 20 years ago you might have talked about plant-based living and it's all great, you can reduce and all this kind of... But now, you know, it's not good enough. We, people have got to open their eyes. It's not down to you whether you want to stop eating meat. You've got to. Yeah. And that's going to be a, a very pittance of a price to pay against what's going to happen if you don't. Yeah. But unfortunately, people don't get that. No. They don't, unless they see it right in front of them. Uh, but if, what are they going to do when we've got no water? Yeah. What are they going to do then? Oh, well, we want to go back. Too late. And you know how much water and food these animals yeah, yeah, yeah. take in from yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you imagine the billions that are on Earth right yeah. now. See, that's a pile, that pile over there, that forage. Uh, yep. That is a week's worth of forage. They're still growing crops to feed grass-fed cattle. Oh, it's just pre-grain crops. Well, there. this is grass. It's dried yeah, grass of, grass, of a yeah. sort. So they could say it's grass-fed, but still they're growing huge volumes to feed these with animals. With water and uh, land. With water and, and land, yeah. yeah. Huge resources to... And don't forget, you know, the amount of diesel and pollution that goes in mm. to actually putting tractors out to do this. They eat massive bulk. Their intestines require massive bulk. The argument is that when they're out on grass, they use the um, CO2 emissions are greater from them. It's a more natural way of living, but because of what they're eating, they make more gas. Yeah. But you can't, you can't, you can't do this. It's not feasible to continue in this model. No. We need to change, and we need to change willingly. Look at it; it's a complete waste. We don't need this. We don't no. need to be doing this. No. We need a planet three and a half times the size. Oh, that's a fact. We need a planet three and a half times the size if we're all going to live like so this. So just put this into perspective. These big pallets of grass will be fed to an animal with all of this water so people can have this small piece of steak. Yeah, yeah. Put all yeah. of this yeah. into one animal over yeah. there. And you can fit, I mean, you can move them, they're massive. And look at, this is, this is for a week. So but if we took that and let it grow into grain, let's just mm. say this was a grain crop. Yeah. And then that could feed a person for six months, yeah, yeah, a yeah. year. So the answer is, take out, cut out the middle bit, cut out the animal bit, that you don't want animals in agriculture. Animals are not agriculture, animals are animals. Yeah. Agriculture is crops, yeah. you know, it's not animals. And we, and we take as much as we need and we distribute it across the world and yeah. we make sure we're not starving. And, yeah. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, and we learn to appreciate what we've got. Mm -hmm. That's another thing, rather than sort of dwelling on what we haven't got, we like, we like look at what we have got and think, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Um, it's kind of, it's so really greedy when you look at it, like what we're doing with our resources to kill an animal to take this small amount of their flesh and... Oh cool, yeah, I mean it's, it's ludicrous, it's ludicrous what we're doing. It may, might even not be this generation, but it'd be the children's generation, mm. the children's children and you know... Mm. Yeah, to be honest with you, not sounding like an old boar, it's happening so quick now. It might I think even it be, could in, be, it this could be in this generation, yeah. I mean I've seen such a change in... Mm. Society now, over the last 
20 years the way things are going yeah. it's not it's not cool it's not looking good yeah. it's not looking good it's like the, I look at it like a circle of karma. Mm. Like we're causing so much suffering and anguish mm. and torture to these animals and it'll be the end of us. Yeah, but also I think there is a lot to say that, you know, we, we are consuming their suffering. Yeah. And you know what? They are the same as us animals. They need food, shelter, um, water and security. A place to call home, actually. Some they need love? Yeah, I think they really like I think they're receptive within their herd. Yeah, and I mean definitely. Their I mean and Do you know what? I don't put myself on a pedestal and say, think that these animals particularly love me. I think that they the best place for these animals is amongst their own kind. Somebody once asked me what would these animals say to you if they could talk? I said, "Well, I hope they wouldn't feel they need to got to say thank you because yeah. that's the last thing I'd want them to say." Yeah. You know, um, I'd want them, you know, this is I'm just affording them their rights. Yeah. Nothing more than that their rights end of. I know it was interesting, I, I, I spoke to Keegan and I said, what was the worst bit of film, filming Cowspiracy? And he said it was the dairy farm, just the demoralisation of the dairy farm, oh, seeing those yeah, cows just horrible. like, you know, you know, longing for their babies. And then, you know, the farmers constantly saying, you know, oh, there's no maternal bond, these are just dumb animals. Like... <sighs> no, no, there's so, the mo yeah. most suffering I've ever experienced is on dairy farms. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes the the big intensive dairy farms, mm. the, the calves are really like not too yeah. far away, but they're mm. just separate. Yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. It is. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, I can't understand women in particular who've given birth. Mm. I've never had kids, but, you know, to, who feel the need to drink and feed their kids milk when surely they should have a direct connection to the maternal to bond. The maternal working, bond yeah. 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 And I was at um, a Sikh temple and one of the ladies there said it was when, it was vegetarian, but when she had her baby, her son, that's when it suddenly clicked. How can anyone think of taking him away from me? And that's exactly what we do to the cows. And it's just like so wrong. It's so exploitative and perverse. So these are the little, little calves that I took in three months ago. I mean, they're just tiny little frail little... Babies. Yeah really innocent vulnerable babies innocent creatures that have not deserved i mean you know but how five are here how many millions aren't here i mean i've had some terrible terrible over the years i've had some terrible terrible what i've seen no, live livestock markets and <laughs> horrible term livestock as opposed to dead stock and um some of what you see and the anger and aggression in in, in some of the people that, that actually deal with these animals is just appalling the whole industry is completely flawed, yeah. ethically flawed. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to look back in shame. Or we, uh, well, we, we're currently looking at it in shame. Yeah. But I think those that wake up in the future are going to mm. be like, what were we what doing? What were you doing? Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, people say to me, oh, radical Fiona, you went vegan at six in the 1970s something. Mm. And I say, well, hang on a minute. Wow. I'm just a kid that knew what was happening to Peppa Pig. We exploit animals doubly. We use them for advertising, we use them to sell cute images to children, mm -hmm. and then we kill them. Yeah. Perhaps I just connected. Uh, you know, what kid would want to say, oh yeah, now today Mrs. Ball and Mrs. Mrs. Sheep are taking Pepper and her family down the abattoir. Whoa. <laughs> you know, but we, we, children are very innocent and I think they would be naturally vegan. I don't have to even explain much to kids. I'm yeah. just like, if they find out that that's a real animal, that's yeah. what it takes. Yeah, exactly. Is that yeah, a real fish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I didn't think yeah. it's a real fish. Yeah, yeah. My story is that when I was in hospital a lot, you know, with my, I've got orthopedic problem and with my knee, uh, my mum was accused of child abuse for, for allowing me to be vegan. That's you absolutely know? insane. And that was by doctors, health professionals, and it made it very uncomfortable because my mum was a nurse. And she really had to dig her heels in, and she wow, said, "You know, what it's a um, woman. It, yeah, my mum is. I mean, without her being so supportive, I don't know where I'd have gone. I, you know, I don't know. But I mean, I've, I've always had my mum behind me. And uh, she said it is cruel. The cruelty is if you lie to your child. That is exactly right. Yeah, because then you're going to look back and think you lied to me, yeah. mum. You lied. You we forced me. You know. We need to be honest with yeah. them. And I, yeah. Obviously, I'm not saying like show them some horrific footage no, that's going to no, no. scar them at that age. But yeah. just be honest with them and yeah. let them make make their decisions. Mm. People say, "Oh, you're forcing veganism on children." But wait a second, you've got to you're give them the choice. You're forcing meat on them. You're forcing meat on them. Yeah. You're give them a choice. Them. Show them, or, or at mm. least tell them what happens to yeah. animals so they can yeah. eat them, and then yeah. let them make a decision. Yeah. And I can guarantee you, I don't think the decision would be to continue. No. 
how we can allow that to continue if we don't need it to continue is an absolute shame on humanity. Yeah, factory farms are absolutely yeah. something out of hell. How can a farm be a factory? How can a factory be a... You know what I mean? It's, it's, these, a factory might make shoes. Yeah. Not living beings. No. Hello, who's this? This is Hope's family. Dina and her family, and then there's Hope over there. Hello, how are you? I mean, this is one of the industries that really, really appalls me, the farrowing yeah. crates and the pigs and the way they're abused, because they are actually very intelligent, very clean, very curious animals. Very highly anxious too, yeah, if they're yeah. like contained. And... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, I can't, I can't for the life of me understand, you know, you're going down the motorway and you see a, a lorry load of pigs, three deep. People are there, like, you know, chilling out. If that was dogs and cats, can hell to be stopped and, like, you know, you'd have, you'd, you'd have, like, human walls around them and the driver would be ripped out and, you know, it, but we just accept it. Why? Why do we accept it? And, you know, people have always said to me, oh, you can't have that, Fiona. You, it's, if it's a piece of cake or what. I don't want it. Check this. I don't want it. I can have it. Yeah. I don't want to buy into it. I just I want to be my own person. Yeah. I, it's horrible I, what uh, we do to pigs in this country with the gas chambers. Yeah. I mean, sometimes they're like dropping them in boiling water and that kind of thing to kill them in scones. Yeah. yeah. And it does go on. Oh, it definitely does go on. I mean, oh, people yeah. say, you know, uh, you know, oh, it could be. Exceptions and all this stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. becoming the rule, mate. And yeah. we've, got, we've got more evidence than they have shown. We've got to learn as a civilization to expect and accept less of everything. And you know, like when people talk about plant-based living, it's, it's not enough. We've got to alter the model of the way we live and it's got, we've got to start thinking about others first and yeah. how our actions impact on them. Yeah. And uh, because we can't go on at this pace mm. having, we can't do that. No. Um, no, we can't. We're out of control. And we think that we've got some little ring fence around us, which means it can continue on because it's not affecting us and it will. And when it does affect us, it will be too late. This is the vegan runner room. Check the kid out. There's your medals though, oh my god, <laughs> you need a bigger hanger. You know Maris and Sable, if you ever want us to do something amazing, do that. Go. I've done it three times. <sighs> the first time I did that race, I did it with two fractured toes. And on the long day, you could see the bone sticking out of my little toe. Crazy. It's crazy race, but I tell you, if you want to learn a lot about yourself and what's important, get into those races because truly, they change your life. If you're open to change, if you're open to learning, they change your life. I mean, it's like um, you're digging so deep, you can't imagine. You really are on the edge. This is amazing. I'm, I'm super inspired too, because um, I'm actually, uh, I ran a marathon on no training the other day. I think you might have seen that. Um, then I watched your film as well afterwards. And then tomorrow there's an ultra marathon. Oh, yeah. So I've got a bit of a sore knee, but I'm going to, Jump into the ultra marathon. What are you doing? It's it's called London Ultra. It's the first one. It's 55 k's. Yeah, the distances do become a, a mental battle. Yeah. Uh, it's much more f mental than physical. Yeah. Much more mental than physical, unless you're going out to like win stages and stuff. Yeah, because I think like a, everyone's going to have a niggle, but I think if you let mm. that niggle stop you, yeah, then a niggle will always stop you. So you always have a. That's what some people say to me about my knee. I know somebody once said, you never go to the start line of a marathon knowing you're carrying an injury. And I've never been knowing I'm not carrying one. I've always got a bad knee. So, but I've got so many other worries going on that I don't kind of notice my knee because um, it's like this hurts and that hurts and the pack's heavy. Oh God, what do I worry about next? So it's like all one just big horrible worry that you don't focus on anything. So it's cool. And it hurts, but when you think about the animals who aren't even, f I think that's why a veganism and running goes so well together because you're free and you're fighting for those that aren't free to be free. Do you know what I mean? Wow. So you are free to go and run. They're not free to even move. I heard something about this. 
What, me and my cow suit? Yeah. Yeah, we didn't know we were going to be buying this place and I got a spare week and I said, I'm going to break a world record in my cow suit. I'm just going to go and do a half marathon world record in that cow suit. <laughs> and uh, I did it and, you know, it got a lot of attention. And people are saying, why, why, are, you wearing, why are you dressed as a cow? And if you say, oh, um, um, I'm raising money for my animal sanctuary. Oh, good on you. That's a good girl. You know. But then I got to the 50k uh, checkpoint. I went in. They got nothing vegan. So I got really angry. And so the next checkpoint, I said, why are you running as a cow? I want to highlight the cruelty of the dairy industry. That was me running up the mile in 20th place in the London Marathon in wow. 2005 with my vegan runner top on. Veganism, you can just look at that word out there. That, that, there was like 500,000 people coming up the mile yeah. and only me on my own. I've got it on the front and back. We need to promote veganism in this way and that was right back in 2005. Wow. You can say what you like about vegans, think what you like, but this on my vest says it all. You can't argue with that. It's a fact. I'm a vegan and I'm proud.